If the name Christian Basson sounds familiar to you, it could be because he's the CEO of the Danish Design Center or because he appeared on the Service Design Show in episode 75. Well, Christian is back on the show and this time we're going to talk about the Service Design Global Conference, which is happening on October 13 and 14, 2022 in Copenhagen. You can also join the conference virtually from anywhere in the world and this year's theme is courage to design for good. And in this conversation, you're going to get an exclusive preview from Christian of what's going to happen at this year's conference. If you are planning to attend, but haven't registered yet, I've got good news for you. I've managed to negotiate a discount for the Service Design Show audience. Yes, that's you. If you use the code SDSHOW during checkout, you get 20% off your ticket price. And that's both for when you plan to attend in person in Copenhagen or virtually. You can find the registration link to the conference down below in the show notes. Now, without any further ado, let's jump into the conversation with Christian and hear what the conference has in store for us this year. Let the show begin. Welcome back to the show, Christian. Thank you so much, Mark. Do you remember which episode it was that featured you on the Service Design Show? This is a quiz question. That's a very good question because I'm aware that you've done so incredibly many episodes that has to be a really high number, but I don't remember. It was 75, so that's uh, we're at over 150 now. So uh, right you are in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Christian, we're going to talk this time about the Service Design Global Conference and uh, about your presentation there, just giving some uh, a bit of a teaser, get people excited. But for the people who haven't seen episode 75 or Googled you yet, could you give a brief introduction what you do these days first? Yeah, so uh, currently I'm the CEO of uh, the Danish Design Center, and we are a nonprofit foundation. We're co-funded by the government of uh, Denmark. And we're working really as an infrastructure for um, advancing the value of design, both in business and uh, government uh, at home and and globally. You've been there for quite a while, right? I... Yep, eight, eight years here. Um, before that, I was director of MindLab, the Danish government's innovation team, also for eight years. And before that, again, I was a management consultant for nearly a decade. Mm. So yeah, it, it almost sounds like you're almost entering uh the next eight years curious where that will be but <laughs> that's for another that's episode. A <laughs> exactly that's a topic for another episode uh christian so you're one of the keynotes uh not just uh one of the keynotes you're the closing keynote at the conference let's um uh, talk a little bit about the theme that you are going to address without giving everything away so what are you going to talk about well we're going to talk about a very big idea and the big idea is, uh, of course, obvious to, to designers that as the world's problems and the challenges we face, both as, uh, as uh, leaders, as uh, citizens, as customers, but also as humanity and as a planet, as those problems are expanding and changing, so must design. Design needs to keep, keep up as a field, as a profession, with the character of the problems we're facing. Before we uh, uh, explore this a bit deeper, you wrote a book about this. Why is this such an important topic to you that you spent uh, the grueling effort of sitting down and writing uh, a book? Why does it? Why do you care? Well, I very much like writing books, and so of course it's been uh, not just grueling as it as it is, but it's also been been fun and interesting to to write write this as a co-author with my my good friend uh, Jens Martin Skipstad. Um, I also wrote it because I've been following and being part of the design field for about a decade and a half by now. And I've seen the field changing and evolving to a point where we are getting very, very good at some things. And what we're very, very good at is to apply design or design thinking to challenges and problems that are organizational in nature, service problems, of course, product problems, and we are very good at solving them. But where design needs to move now, as I see it, and uh, through the work we're doing also at the Danish Design Center, is to a much more ambitious or systemic level where we're taking on the really long-term and complex challenges of our time. And that's where I've seen the need to write a new book that sort of takes us to that level, but also does it in a way that respects or that works with, you know, how technology is changing, how innovation is changing, how 
uh, you know, uh, what are the current examples we see uh, where there's inspirational things happening. So it's a way of a, you know, a big think book, almost a philosophical book, but it's also one that has, you know, dozens and dozens of case examples of what's going on in the world right now. Mm. So uh, you mentioned uh, that to me that there are six sort of areas where you feel so design needs to expand and, and move into the next phase. Can you uh, sort of pick one that is maybe most dear to your heart and, and uh, give us an idea of wh what are we talking about here? Sure. The first theme in the book, uh, which is also very close to my heart and something that that, that we also work a lot with here is that Traditionally, in design or in design thinking and human-centered design, we really have don't have a very strong concept about time. Of course, we work with time as you know a timeline in the user journey. For example, we all know that. But when it comes to long-term thinking, long-term action, we we have sort of an un underdeveloped uh, muscle around that in in the design professions. I think. Um, and that's a problem uh, because the, the challenges we're facing as humanity, as a planet, when it comes to more sustainable ways of, of, of living, uh, you know, are long-term challenges. They're not addressed either this year or next year, but they are generational challenges that they require a much longer-term view. And that means that as designers, our field has to look to other disciplines, look to science fiction, look to design fiction, look to foresight and scenario work look into speculative design. I mean, we need to embrace other types of practices to look for the long term. And we do see countries, we see companies talking about, you know, 100-year plans, 300-year strategies. We see like a revitalization of foresight work uh, for today's world. We see a rise of uh, science fiction again. Uh, there was an article in Harvard Business Review a few years ago that said, you know, why do managers need to read more science fiction? Because in a way, we need to, you know, stimulate our imagination and 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 look to um, the future in ways where we uh, also recognize that the future is uncertain. It's open. It can be different things, and all of that goes to bringing, you know, long-term thinking back into design. Hmm. And um, focusing on this specific topic, I'm curious if you feel that is this uh, an area that needs to be. Uh, uh, yeah, sort of uh, uh, pioneered and uh, evangelized by the design community? Or uh, is this something that uh, I would say our clients, our stakeholders need to sort of ask? So is it is it more of a setting the agenda kind of thing? Or how do you see that? When I was a management consultant, I learned something interesting, which is that supply stimulates demand. So if you if you propose new terms um, in, in in management thinking or in in let's call it innovation thinking, if you do it well, you're actually able to create the demand for it. And of course, you can do that just to sell more consulting or sell more hours or whatever. But you could also do it because you think it's it's important and it's relevant. I think the design community needs to start. Uh, proposing uh, foresight, design scenarios, design fiction, more imaginative ways of working with the long-term futures as something that designers offer. Whether you're a designer internally in, in, a, in, an, in an organization or you are a, a, a advisor or a consultant or external uh, agency. I think we need to add this to our vocabulary and to our ways of working and just like designers proposing service design have been quite successful or human-centered design have been very successful in creating that need or that, that demand in business and in government, I think we need to stimulate that demand now because the world needs it. And I uh, maybe, uh, and I'm hoping that this is one of those things that uh, our clients do want and do need. They're just not able to articulate exactly. what it specifically is. And if we are able to present this in a clear, compelling, attractive way, then it might be a, a, a very natural fit and natural match. So yeah. It is. And, and because design, of course, fundamentally is future oriented. It's all about building and proposing and creating and making 
something new, right? Uh, of course, new can also be uh, circular or re reuse, or it can be combination, but still it's about the proposing something that does not exist already. So the design profession is future oriented. It's just interesting that only until you know recently are we beginning to see some really interesting mergers between the world of strategic planning and foresight and scenario work on the one side, and then the sensibilities and the craftsmanship and the ability to give form to ideas in design. So what I see is really that we need to take the, the best from foresight and you know, working with long-term futures and futurism, the best of design, which is you know the playfulness, the ability to work with visually and creatively and with artifacts, and then also the storytelling and the narratives that we can be we're good at in design, but can also draw in from science fiction, from literature, that combination is incredibly powerful. And the reason it's powerful is that traditionally, traditional foresight work is very analytical, it's very uh, brain, brainy, and it somehow never really or rarely creates action. But to designers, you know, with the way we create action or designers create action is through empathy, it's through identification, it's through making, it's making proposals that are concrete and visual. And if you bring that power together with foresight, suddenly you have something that can really mobilize people, motivate them, create empathy and so on. So there's something there in that intersection that's really, really powerful. That's that's uh, super interesting. And uh, at the, in the book and in the conference, you're basically going to sort of address these six areas, for instance, uh, time, and then uh, say, we might need to start rethinking this and also give some examples or maybe direction where to start thinking it. It's probably not a definitive list, but uh, well, start looking into science fiction. That might be an interesting area to explore for design. And I can imagine you also do that for the other five topics, exactly. right? Uh, so uh, we do that with all of them. And and, and one uh, one other example that I think is, uh, is is really, really important and also a bit of a challenge to the design field is that we've gotten very, very good at human-centered design. And you could say that human-centeredness, understanding what makes a product or service attractive and drives uh, demand, drives behavior, drives consumption, is what's gotten the planet into a very, very big mess. Uh, so in a way, it's the success of design, and I'm not the first one to say this, I'm aware of that, but you know, it's success of designers that have really driven the consumption and the mass production we have in the world today, and which is not sustainable. So. We need to make a shift. And again, we are not the only voices against Martin and me, uh, but we make the argument in the book that we have to shift from human-centered to life-centered design and take a, be aware of a much wider set of, of, of living things when we design, even into service design. You know, what about nature? What about other living species? What about the footprint in terms of biodiversity and environment and climate change as we go about doing our thing? And so, so that's just a, a, a second point from the book that I think is a challenge to the design community, but also an opportunity to, to sort of shift towards a more holistic perspective on, on, on who are we designing for. And it has to be more than humans. Hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I would love to go into that, but maybe we need to schedule a service design show interview. Uh, we'll do that. What are, very briefly, what are the other four? Uh, so as a, again, as a quick teaser, Right. So again, um, uh, we have uh, number one was uh, was time. Uh, then we have uh, uh, life, as I mentioned. Then we have uh, a third one, a uh, third expansion, we call it, which is called proximity. And just very briefly, proximity is about closeness and empathy and asking questions about how do we generate a feeling of closeness to the problem and going again beyond the customer or the user to saying what are the other actors, including non-human ones, we need to feel close to. Feeling close to melting ice on the ice caps or feeling close to uh, uh, humans uh, on the other side of our planets or uh, feeling close to other species. Then um, we have something we call value. And value is about you know what impact are we designing for? Are we designing only for economic or commercial impacts or for higher productivity? or for environmental and social outcomes. And there's a huge shift happening in business right now that designers, I think, need to accelerate, which is putting environmental and social impact as high or even higher than economic impact of, the, of our design. Then we have a fifth one called uh, Dimensions, uh, which is about uh, understanding and thinking about the scale at which we design. 
uh, both small and large scale. Uh, how far do we go to design? You know, right now there's a lot of experimentation with designing for other planets, the moon, from Mars. But dimensions is also about the digital versus the physical dimension. How do we blend these dimensions in different ways? And what's the future of AI and virtual reality when it comes to design? And then the last one, um, the sixth expansion we call uh, sectors. And sectors doesn't sound so sexy maybe, but it's really about how the public and private sectors are blending in different ways. And as we go about designing more systemic change, we need to think very creatively and differently about the roles we have in government and in the private sector. Because the idea traditionally, the government is bureaucratic and, uh, and uh, insular and uh, st stable and uh, conformist and the private sector is agile and fast and innovative, it's increasingly come, coming under uh, under attack or, or being ch changed so that we see government can be quite innovative and forward-looking and businesses uh, begin to actually take on public values like, for example, social and envir environmental impact. So sectors are blending and changing in different ways. We need to understand that as designers. So those are the six uh, expansions in the book. Mm. Now, uh, I'm looking forward to, to hearing and uh, hearing the examples and, and getting some guidance and directions. Now, th there will be uh, hundreds, maybe thousands of people listening to your story at the Service Design Global Conference. If, if you could give them one question to think about uh, related to your story, what, what would the question be? Well, the big question again in the book really is... Uh, as this problem is morphing and changing, how must our design practice change? Uh, how must design change? That's the big, uh, huge question for, for the discipline, I think. Um, on a more practical level, um, you know, designers are you know, good at stimulating their own imagination and creativity. But we still need to think more radically, I think, about how do we actually push our thinking in new directions? And, and that's the question we must ask. Mm. Cool. Uh, how do we think about design? I like that. That's a good question. Um, sort of wrapping up, um, two final questions. What are you, it, this conference is in your hometown, Copenhagen. What are you most looking? What are you looking most forward to? That was the thing I was going to ask. Well, it's really wonderful to have this global service design conference in Copenhagen, right on our backyard, and we are we're also having a reception, an opening reception here at uh, at our space. Actually, in the space you see here, it's uh, you can see all of it, but that's where we're going to have the the opening reception at the DDC. Um, I actually just look forward to reconnecting in person with the global community. It's been a long two years with the pandemic. It's been too many two-dimensional transactional Zoom calls, even though it's. I'm happy to see you here, Mark. Just meeting the community and, and interacting with uh, both old friends and uh, the new ones I haven't met yet. I really look forward to that in person. Mm. Hmm. And uh, if somebody wants to connect with you and are physically in Copenhagen and maybe are just listening to the audio version of this video, how will they recognize you? They'll probably see someone pretty fast talking and uh, gesticulating quite a lot and uh, being, uh, you know, engaged in a lot of conversation and uh, maybe uh, also running from one thing to the next. So if they see something that looks like that, that's probably me. All right. Sounds like a, an interesting description to be on the lookout for. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Christian, for getting on the show with me again and giving us a preview of what's coming up. Uh, super interesting topic. I think a lot of people will walk away uh, divergent thinking and uh, coming up with new ideas. So, uh, yeah, have fun. Thanks so much, Mark. Thanks and pleasure to be on your show today. I hope that this conversation with Christian gave you a preview of what's coming up at this year's Service Design Global Conference. Of course, there's much more, and I hope you're curious to actually attend the conference. If you plan to register but haven't done so yet, remember to use the code SDSHOW to get 20% of your ticket price. And that's regardless if you are joining in person in Copenhagen or virtually from anywhere in the world. The link to get your tickets is down below in the show notes. My name is Mark Fontaine and I want to thank you for being part of this community. Awesome that you tuned in to the Service Design Show and I look forward to see you in the next episode.